Hello boys and girls, it's me, Mrs. Buser. You can call me Mrs. B. Welcome to Cubbies. We're going to have a lot of fun learning more about the life of Jesus. So let's stand up and I have a special surprise for you. One moment. I need my special friend, Cubby Bear, to come play our warm-up game. So, you know the game Simon Says, now we'll play Cubby Says. Are you ready? Hello, Cubby. Hello, boys and girls. Are you ready? Everybody, hands up. Everybody, put your hands up. Hands down. We'll wave them down low. Turn around. Two more times. One, two. Now, everybody, jump up and down five times. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, everybody, sit down, and I'll go get my friend Katie Colley. Bye. Oh, fun. Cubby doesn't usually come and play with us in the beginning. Let's head over to the puppet stage, and we'll find out more of the story with Puppy and Katie Colley. Cubby even gave us a hint as to who else would be in the puppet show today. So let me get Katie ready. Thank you for your patience. All right, are you ready? Should we call them? Ready? One, two, three. Call Cubby. Cubby. Katie. <gasps> Hello, boys and girls. It's me, Cubby. And it's me, ruff, ruff, Katie Coley. Well, what have you two been up to? Katie, you have a sign around your neck. Well, let me read it. It says, whoops, we have to move. Katie's tab, and it says, honey for sale. What honey sale are you guys talking about? Oh, we've been super helpers today at the farm. Today's the big honey sale, and we've been trying to spread all the good news about the honey. Yes, I wear the sign, woof, woof, and then I yell out, honey for sale, honey for sale, and I tell the especially good news. I say, bye. Get one free! Buy one, get one free! Oh, how are sales going? Well, at first we didn't have many people, and then our special friend came, and that got the business going. Which special friend? Oh, her, her, Kate Lovey Lamb came. She knew there was a certain bear who loved honey. That's me! That's me! Lovey bought one jar, and she got another free, and she gave one to me and one to Timothy. Oh, that was really nice of Lovey. Yes, and then many more people came to buy honey. Well, we need to get back to the farm to sell more honey. Bye, boys and girls. Bye, boys and girls. Goodbye, Katie. Goodbye, Cubby. Well, Cubby Bear and Katie were happy to tell the good news about the honey sale, but our Bible lesson tonight is about the best good news we could ever share. So let's start by taking a look about where our Bible story takes place. Remember, this is Israel in Bible times. We have the Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River, and the Salt Sea, or the Dead Sea, and Jerusalem's right about there. And this is where all the disciples were and Jesus was in the beginning of our Bible story. So we'll put our map here. And our Bible story comes from the book of Acts in the Holy Scriptures. Okay, so time just held good mind. So what is good news? Good news is something that makes us very excited and happy to share. We want to tell everybody good news. Can you imagine how happy and excited we will be to tell everybody about the day that it's safe for us to go back to church and play outside with our friends and Sunday not wearing masks? We don't know when that time will be, but when we do find out about it, it will be good news that we'll want to share. Well, until that day, we have the best news to tell other people. We know that Jesus came to earth and he did many miracles to show everybody that he was God's son. And he taught us about how much he loves us. 
and he was willing to die on the cross to take the punishment for our sins. What are sins? Let's review that. You know that a sin is anything that we say or think or do that disobeys God. And it's never okay to disobey. Well, Jesus knew that all of us would sin, but he took the, and sin would separate us from God. But he died on the cross to take that punishment so that we wouldn't have to be punished or separated from God. And the Bible tells us more good news. Jesus didn't stay dead in that tomb. After three days, he rose again, which meant that God accepted Jesus' sacrifice by dying on the cross. And so then Jesus, what we know in the Bible, it tells us that Jesus then spent um, 40 days with his disciple friends, teaching them about how much God loved them. And then one day, while he was teaching, he, something very special happened. Now, he was about to go up to his forever home back in heaven. And he had one last thing to tell the disciples. So if this was the very last thing, we want to pay attention to it. He said to them, it's our Bible verse, Mark 16, 15. He said, go into all the world and proclaim or tell, proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Wait, what does that mean? Go into all the world. We know, go everywhere, tell everybody. Proclaim means go tell. The gospel, the gospel is the other word for good news, really, really good news. So go everywhere and tell everybody the good news and everybody to all creation, meaning all people everywhere. And then, just like if you let a helium balloon go flying on up to the sky, Jesus suddenly went up, 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 up into the, into the clouds until his disciple friends could not see him anymore. Well, how would you think they felt? How would you, how would you feel if Jesus was there and then he suddenly had disappeared into the clouds? Maybe they were sad, scared, confused. What was happening? Well, Jesus didn't leave them that way. He sent two angels. Two angels came and they said, why are you standing there looking up? Jesus will come back someday, and he'll come back the same way he just left. Well, his disciple friends were like, well, we shouldn't just stand here. What should we do? And then they remembered something else Jesus had told them. Jesus had said, I want you to stay in Jerusalem, and when I go back up into heaven with God the Father, I will send you a special helper. Hmm, they didn't know what that meant, but they knew they should obey Jesus. So they went back to the place where they had been staying, and they waited many days, and they prayed and prayed and said, help us to please be ready, Lord, for your special helper. Help us to know what to do. And then one day, the Bible tells us suddenly there was this loud, loud sound in Jerusalem where they were. Can you we make the sound of a wind? It was a loud, loud wind. Let's do that. <gasps> they were startled. And then suddenly there was something that looked like flames of fire that came onto the head of each of the disciples and all the other people who were with them who had followed Jesus, including his mother Mary. Now, it wasn't real fire, it didn't burn their hair, it didn't hurt anybody. It was something that looked like flames of fire. But suddenly, all of the disciples could speak other languages. Remember when Jesus said, go into all the world? Well, he was allowing them to speak to people from other countries who wouldn't understand their language. Now, Jesus knew just Oh, so that fire, that was the Holy Spirit coming into them. That was Jesus' special helper, the Holy Spirit. It's hard to understand. Lots of adults don't fully understand it, but God, there's one God. 
but it's three people. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, who came and lived on earth for a time to teach us about God. And Jesus said when he went up into heaven, he would send the Holy Spirit. Well, this is how the Holy Spirit came to those disciples. And that allowed them to speak to others. Hmm, what were they going to go tell others? Let's see. Well, they went outside. And it was a special time. It was a special holiday called Pentecost. And it was one of the three times of the year that all the Jewish men from all over the world were supposed to come back to Jerusalem to worship at the temple. God knew just the right time. He brought the people of the world to the disciples. So they went out and they started speaking and all of the disciples were saying, or the other people were saying, wait, 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 wait. Those men, we remember them. We've heard them, they were Jesus's friends. They even came from Galilee and we always know what people from Galilee sound like, but they're speaking my language from my home country. I can understand them in Egyptian. I can understand them in Arabic. In the Greek languages, all the languages of the world, God allowed the disciples to be able to speak just for this reason. And Peter got their attention. He said, everybody pay attention. Don't worry about us. We, have, we can speak your language because we have special good news to share. And Peter explained to all of these people who were Jewish from the Hebrew scriptures about the Messiah that God had promised to send. And he taught them about how Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies so they would know what to expect. And he said, Jesus is the one who God promised to send to take the punishment for our sins. So when he died on the cross, he was taking the punishment for the sins of everybody who would understand and trust that he's the promised savior. And remember, we're telling you Jesus did not stay dead on that cross. Jesus did not stay dead in that tomb. After three days, he rose again, just as it was promised in the Bible. And he is now in heaven. And for all of us who believe that he's the promised savior and who thank him for taking our punishment on the cross, we can someday live in our forever home with Jesus too. Well, oh, that was good news to share. That was good news to hear. And the Bible tells us about 3,000 people, a huge number of people, believed Peter and the other disciples and that very day and asked Jesus to be their savior. Well, that special good news, again, was not just for Peter and the disciples to share. The, that message that Jesus gave them was a message for us. And there's more good news. We don't have to wait for flames of fire to come on our head. We're not going to receive the Holy Spirit that way. The Bible tells us that when we ask Jesus to be our Savior and we thank him for dying on the cross for our sins, the Holy Spirit comes into us and every day it comes in and helps us to understand God's word, to obey God's word, and to teach us how to tell other people the good news about Jesus. So let's stand up one more time. Let's say our Bible verse first. Okay, it's Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. One more time. Go into the whole, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. So it means go everywhere and tell the good news about Jesus to everybody. And the Holy Spirit will help us do that. Now, we have a song that's even the good news. Do you remember which one of our songs that we sang before is our good news song? It's the you and me song. The message of that song is the good news that Jesus wants us to tell everybody. So let's sing it one more time. Are you ready? You and me, you and me, Jesus died on the cross for you and me, you and me, you 
and me. Jesus rose from the dead for you and me. You and me. You and me. In heaven there's a home for you and me. You and me. You and me. In heaven there's a home for you and me. You can sing that song or you can find other creative ways to tell people the good news about Jesus. So before we go, let's pray and thank God one more time for giving us the Holy Spirit to help us understand God's word, obey God's word, and share the good news. Dear God, thank you um, first for sending Jesus to show us how much you love us Thank you that Jesus would die on the cross to take the punishment for our sins. And thank you that when Jesus left earth, he sent the Holy Spirit to his disciples and promises to give us the Holy Spirit as a helper to understand you and to obey you and to share the good news about Jesus with others. Please help each of the boys and girls to want to understand you and obey you and to want to tell other people about you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right. Who can you tell the good news about Jesus? I can't wait until I can see you again and you can tell me. All right. Goodbye, boys and girls.